First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by AT&T, mobilizing your world. After starting 57 straight games for the Colts, including the playoffs, Andrew Luck will miss his second straight game tonight versus the Texans, according to our Adam Schefter. Matt Hasselbeck will get the nod in his place. Stephen A., how worried are you about your Super Bowl pick, or is this just a mere bag of shells? Well, I've, I've already given up on them as my Super Bowl pick, which yeah. I announced, I, which I announced uh, last week. I, they just look like a shell of themselves. They're not what they're supposed to be. Uh, they rank very low in the league, around 25th to 26th in terms of their running game. I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing right now. Uh, you know, Frank Gore obviously is Frank Gore, but at the same time, you would expect them to have done more. They're ranking 26th in terms of their running attack. I'm just not sold on them. And so for me, I look at it from that perspective. Even though Frank Gore is doing his thing, averaging more than four yards a carry, I don't know if he's not being utilized enough, if Gregson and Pagano haven't shown up the offensive line. Maybe it's Andre Johnson and those guys ain't doing much. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to pick them to win tonight because the Texans have injuries, mm -hmm. but I'm not sold on the coach right now. So they're now a mere bag of shells of themselves. Yes. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I got yes. it. Okay, I, the irony of what happened to your Colts last week may have been lost on you because they actually did remain barely afloat because they managed to overcome I Jacksonville. I watched Because them. Jacksonville's new kicker, a kid named Myers, missed two easy field goals at yeah. the end in overtime, regulation overtime at Indy that allowed the Colts to survive to be two and two. And why, was the, why is he kicking for the, the Jacksonville Jaguars? because they traded away Scooby-Doo Scrubby. Remember the guy you ridiculed at Pittsburgh? They traded him to, to obviously, your Steelers. And then yep. in the toughest place to kick in the National Football League, you, you condemned him for missing late field goals there, which nobody can make because it's just impossible to kick in those Sweezum conditions. Sweezum did a good job. Sweezum did a good job before he got hit. He, he was at the okay, season. but I don't know that he could have made a 50-yard field goal because th they're rarely made there. It's just impossible at Heinz Field to kick in the, the tricky gusts and the wind. So Scooby-Doo Scrubby, if he had still been in Jacksonville, where he was a very clutch kicker, five out of five on walk-off kicks, I'm pretty sure he would have been six out of six on walk-off kicks inside in Indy, and that would have completely done in your Colts because it would have dropped them to one and three. Am I right about that? Mm. That's fair I enough. I am right about that. Yes, you so, are. So now you, you're picking... You're sticking with them tonight I'm to win? With the, tonight because, you know, DeAndre Hopkins may not play. I don't know how many weapons they have for the Tech. I think the Texans have some injuries, and that's the problem. Uh, I think this is, I think, you know, to me, the Colts, I have not been impressed with them, but I think that the Texans have too many injuries, and the Colts can find a way to squeeze this Boy, out. I, I think the Texans have to win this game. They're a four I think they have to win it. They have to win it, but Skip, they just don't have enough. Okay. I, I, I agree with you. They have to win. They just don't have enough. I think the Texans are going to put mm -hmm. your Colts almost out of their early season misery here. Like I this wouldn't is be surprised. Be yep. I wouldn't be surprised. I ain't going to lie. All right. How about those Cubbies, guys? How about those Cubbies? Right? This is going to be their year. Men to be. Not yeah. against the Mets. We'll see. See you guys tomorrow. We'll be picking all the games. According to multiple reports, Knicks coach Derek Fisher was involved in an altercation with Grizzlies board and former teammate Matt Barnes. The New York Post, which first reported this story, stated that the altercation was because Fisher is dating Barnes' estranged wife. Stephen A., what's your reaction to this? Well, my reaction to it is that it's unfortunate. You know, the personal details of what transpired is not something that I'm going to get into. I can promise you that much. I think it would be incredibly inappropriate, inappropriate because obviously, you know, it's not just the adults that are involved. There are kids that are involved. Um, from my understanding, that's obviously something that, uh, Matt, that, that, that incited Matt Barnes uh, to some degree. Nevertheless, it's not something that uh, obviously makes Derek Fisher look good. I know both of these guys. I respect the hell out of both of these guys. And on a personal level, I'm certainly not going to go into the details of what I obviously have heard. But what I will tell you is that if you're Derek Fisher, you know, regardless of how Matt Barnes looked because of his checkered past in terms of, you know, saying something to James Harden's mom and, you know, some of the things that he has spewed to other folks in, in, in the stands on occasion, uh, the, the person that really, really looks bad 
uh, to some degree, is a Derek Fisher. You are the coach of the New York Knicks, and although you were out in California uh, to see your family, your children, you remember he filed for a divorce last March. Uh, his kids are in Los Angeles with his wife, with his, with his, you know, strange wife Candace, who I know as well. Um, you know, the situation is 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 very is very shaky to say the least. Uh, but when you're out there um, and you end up having to miss a day in training camp, fresh off of a 17 and 65 season, and you're not with the team. Uh, I think that Frank Isola of the New York Daily News, my friend, somebody uh, that I know covers the Knicks over the past 16 years uh, better than anybody that I've seen in quite a long time. Uh, he knows um, when he sits there and says and writes uh, that the free pass that Derek Fisher had last year, that honeymoon period is now officially over. He's absolutely right because you don't need to have any kind of distractions. Uh, the New York Knicks are bad enough all by themselves. I suspect they'll be better this year with a Flalo and Robin Lopez added to the squad. But you are fresh off of a 17 and 65 season, which, if you can believe it, is the worst in franchise history, worse than anything we had seen prior to last season. When you take that into account, along with the fact that there are questions about Phil Jackson's involvement and suddenly he's going to be more involved, even though he was paid 12 million a year to be involved to, from the beginning. And then you bring in a coach who's never coached on any level before and you have the kind of season that you had. And then you combine that with filing for a divorce, with having uh, or being involved with a woman that's on the show Basketball Wives, which in all honesty, I mean, I have no opinion about that, but I happen to know the NBA um, is appalled by the show. It makes them cringe. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, from folks inside the NBA office, and certainly Frank Isola accurately wrote that as well. Um, I just think that that puts Derek Fisher in a spot that he doesn't need to be in. It's not my place to get into their personal business. I don't roll like that. I'm not about to now. Fisher and Matt Bonds have to handle their own business. Uh, but I will say this, Matt Bonds, the NBA has no business getting involved with Matt Barnes as opposed to it being fine. You need to talk to him and make sure that that's not something that happened again. Uh, but Matt Barnes didn't just react because of who it is. He reacted because it's the mother of his children. Mm -hmm. and, in, and, in, and in Fisher's case, uh, you're grown. You're not just a player now. You're a coach. Yep. And right, wrong, or otherwise, you've got to be the bigger man and be sensitive to that. This is not one of those situations where neither, where either deserves to be fined, nor do they deserve people like myself and others commenting about their personal business. Uh, and I definitely don't think that it's the NBA that should get involved from fining them. They should just sit there and say, chill, and let's make sure that this is not something that ever happens again and leave it at that because this ain't some, you know, small, immature beef. Yep. All I'm going to say is, Children are involved. Let's mm -hmm. leave it at that. I am 100% with you on that one, Stephen A. We're going to get Skip's take after the break. Stay right here on First Day. Welcome back to First Take, presented by Bass Pro Shops. Before the break, we were discussing the Derek Fisher Matt recently had, and we heard Stephen A's take. Skip, we didn't get to hear from you. What's your reaction to this whole situation? Stephen A., you've often said on this show that a player's personal business is his personal business, and you will stay out of that personal business as it relates to your job of reporting on the NBA. And I sometimes say, I'm with you to this point. If what a player is involved in off the court starts to impact or affect his performance on the court, then it becomes germane to what we're discussing here on this show. Now, Derek Fisher clearly, as you point out, is no longer a player. He is the head coach of the New York Knicks, and I know they're pathetic. I know they're a disaster. I, I can't remember all the words that you've used. What, what's your, your favorite expression about the Knicks? They're a travesty or what, whatever they are. All those An abomin a abomination. basketball abomination. Yeah, a basketball but abomination. They'll be better, but they'll be better this year. Okay, fine. I, I get that. But they're the once storied New York franchise that has a great but distant past and tradition. And Derek Fisher has to accept that, that he has now a new responsibility to be 
the face of that franchise right now. I know Carmelo is too, but Derek Fisher is the, the new head coach, has to assume that he's the face of the franchise and the tone setter for that franchise. So if I understand the story correctly, he took the weekend off from training camp to fly to Los Angeles under the auspices of he wanted to visit his kids. Great, but he wound up in this, in the middle of this incident which didn't have anything to do with visiting his kids. And it's just a bad look for the Knicks and obviously for the NBA. Nobody likes this. There's nothing pretty about it. There's nothing uh, face-saving about it. it we, we all don't like it. We don't want to get into the tabloid details here, but it's just not right for Derek Fisher to wind up involved in this, however it happened. So he just has to continue to grow up as a head coach and realize, I just can't. I can't involve myself in these kind of situations anymore. Maybe as a player, it was a little different. As a head coach, no. Sorry. I completely agree. I have nothing to add to that. You're absolutely right. All right. Let's